welcome back to my channel in this tutorial i'll be showing you how to use provider in your flutter application provider is one of the most popular state management used by most of the flutter community provider state management depends heavily on the build context without build context you can't access to the provider that you created in this tutorial i will be using this provider package which you can find in pub.dev Now I will add this package dependency into the Flutter project To prevent any error on the tutorial, make sure you are using the same environment SDK as mine After adding provider package dependency we can now run the Flutter application. Here I have created a simple Flutter app with a text and an elevated button. So this is how the simple Flutter app looks. Now I will show you how to implement provider in this application. There are many ways to implement provider state management in your Flutter application and it all depends on the complexity of the requirement. In this tutorial, I will be showing you a basic way to implement provider and an advanced way to implement provider. Now let's start with the basic one which is future provider widget. Wrap the whole material app with future provider widget. And it's required to add create parameter. And since this is a basic way of implementing provider, I will just add a random return future value. And make sure you specify the return type beside the future builder. Since it's returning an integer value, I will specify int beside the future builder. Next, it's required to add the initial data for the future provider. The reason to wrap the future provider on material app is to allow each and every children of the material app able to access the provider data value through the context. Now I will show you how to retrieve the integer value in the provider we created just now in the widget below using context. We can get the provider value by using context.watch method. And since our provider only returns an integer value, we can specify the return type beside watch. Now I will display the integer value retrieve inside a text widget. When we do a hot restart, we manage to display the integer value in the provider that we created. However, it printed out an error in the terminal. If you are using future value in anywhere of your Flutter application, never forget to do a now check when you read the future value. And this is how we use a basic provider in the Flutter application. We can even change the future value of the provider that we created and it will reflect on anywhere that reads the value. For tutorial purposes, I specified the provider to return an integer value while you can customize the return value based on your requirement. For example, it can return a list of string. And on the create method, I will specify some mock data strings. And when we want to retrieve the list of string, we should change the return type specified in context.watch to list of strings. Now I will display a random index in the provider list of strings. As you can see in the simulator, it display the second index of string in the provider list. And this is how you can change the return value of the provider based on your needs. The use case of wrapping future provider above material app 
is that you can store user information such as username, user token, and so on at the top of the material app. And this information could access by anywhere in the children of the app. This basic use of provider only allows you to write once and you can't update the value in the provider. Now I will introduce you a way to update the provider values and listen to the changes and it is the advanced use of provider. Now let me remove the implementation of the basic provider just now and start from scratch. In order to listen to provider changes, instead of wrapping with future provider, we wrap with change notifier provider. This will expose the material app to its descendants and rebuild dependence whenever notify listener method is called. This widget will accept a create parameter as well. Instead of returning a future value, in this change notifier provider, we will return a class. By returning a class in the provider, we can define not only the data but also function to the provider. Now I will show you how we can define a class for the provider. The provider class that we create have to extend change notifier class. This is because we need to call the notify listener method from change notifier class. In this counter class, I will create an integer count variable and also an increment function that will increase the count value by one. In the increment function, after incrementing the count value by one, we have to execute notify listener method inherit from change notifier class. Every time notify listener method is called, the whole UI will rebuild and it will reflect the latest changes on the UI. Now we have finished created a class as our provider and implemented a change notifier provider to the material app. Now I will show you how to listen to the provider counter class count value and how to execute the provider class increment method. To read the provider value, we can use context.read method to retrieve the provider value. And after the read method, we have to provide the class name and specify the data that we want to read, which is dot count. And if in your class, you have more than one variable and you want to read different value, you just have to change the name after the dot to the variable that you want to read. And this is how you read the value in provider. However, now I want to show you how to listen to the variable instead of just reading it. We just have to change the read to watch method. By watching the count value, it will make the UI responsive as when the count value changes, it will rebuild the UI. And I will display the counter value in the text widget below. Next, I'll be showing you how to execute the provider class function. Since the function only executes once a time, we can use context.read.functionName. Don't forget to specify the class name so that it knows to execute which function from which class. And this is how we execute function in provider. Now let's try out the function in the simulator. When I do a hot restart, as you can see, the value changed to zero because by default, the count value in the class is set to zero. Now when I click on the elevator button, as you can see, the count value incremented by one and it reflects the result immediately in the UI because the counter value variable keeps listening on the count value changes. Now you can read or listen to the count value or execute the increment function anywhere in the application or in the whole material app as long as you have the context. And this is one of the powerful feature of state management. Here comes to the end of the tutorial. If you have any question, feel free to comment below. If you like my video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next tutorial.